Okay, this problem came in via email, and I thought it was a really good problem. And uh, it's, it kind of deals with, uh, I guess, what you would consider calculus three in, in a college calculus class. Um, let me read the problem statement, then we'll go through it. It says, given the directional derivative of this function f of three variables x, y, and z at three minus two, one, in the direction of this vector u, 2i minus j minus 2k, th that the value of that directional derivative is minus 5. And we're told that the magnitude of the gradient of f at that same point is plus 5. And then it says, find what is the gradient of f at that point. So let's analyze the problem a little bit, and then we'll, we'll come up with a solution. It doesn't involve a lot of calculation. It just requires some mental arithmetic to uh, mental athletics to figure out what it is you're being asked and, and what are you actually given. So the first thing to note is that this unit vector u is not actually a unit vector, right? It's, uh, it's 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared. So it actually has a magnitude of square root of 9, which is 3, right? So it's not actually a unit vector. So if we ever need to use a unit vector, we can use this, but we have to divide it all by 3 in order to make it correct. So now, what is the directional derivative, right? This, the directional derivative in the direction of u of f is the gradient of f dotted with u, right? It's a dot product. So the directional derivative then is a scalar quantity. It's a value indicating some kind of a slope, essentially related to this equation. So now we can, a uh, dot product is the same as you take AB cosine theta, right? So this is the same as magnitude of gradient of F times magnitude of U cosine theta, right? Where theta would be the angle between the gradient, which is a vector, and U, a vector, right? Here's the gradient, here's U, right? This is theta. So now let's look at this, right? So we have the magnitudes of two things times cosine theta. When is this maximum? Well, it's maximum when theta, cosine theta is one, right? Which would mean that theta is zero. And it's minimum when, th when cosine theta is minus one, which would be theta equals to 180 degrees, right? So cosine's never gonna get bigger than one or smaller than minus one. So those are the two maximum values. So now let's go back to our problem statement. What we're told is the directional derivative at this point is minus five, and the magnitude of the gradient is five. So notice at this point here where theta is zero, the, the directional derivative is gonna be the plus max value, right? And at the point where theta is 180, it's gonna be the, min, the negative max value but it's the same absolute value, just a plus or minus sign. So what we have here is the, direct, the gradient is five, directional derivative is minus five. So we know that we're dealing with a situation here of 180 degrees. So now all we have to do to figure out the gradient, we don't have to do any calculation of partial derivatives or solve multiple simultaneous equations or anything. What we have to do is take our, our direction vector here, it's not a unit vector, but we have 2i and a j and 2k, right? But we want the opposite direction. Now notice if you have a vector, right, 3i plus 2j, let's just say, the opposite vector is going to be minus 3i minus 2j, right? So that's 180 degrees difference. So what we want to do to our unit vect our vector here is we want to apply the opposite sign. So minus 2i plus j minus 2k, so that's, we've got the direction part, but now we have to have a gradient that has a magnitude of five. This thing has a magnitude of three, so we have to multiply the whole thing by five over three. And so that then is the gradient. Okay, so let me stand over here. I hope that this made sense. It's a problem in mental gymnastics. How do you take, interpret directional derivative and gradient and then analyze what you're given and de decide which way is maximum and minimum. So gradient, remember, 
tells you the direction that the function is changing the steepest, right? If you're going to hike up a mountain, you do not want to hike up the gradient. That's going to be the most difficult slope. Okay. If you have any problems, send them to solve at midnighttutor.com. The key to a problem like this is to go through a lot of sweat and tears and paper. Paper is cheap, lots of paper. Eventually you'll see some insights and you'll get this. But the key is to not give up. Okay, good luck.